Welcome to the Veritas Forum, engaging university students and faculty in discussions about life's hardest questions and the relevance of Jesus Christ to all of life. Professor Haldane, there may be side worries about taking a kind of theistic public philosophy as the foundation, at least for our norms in civil society. I mean, for example, isn't it easier to fall into fanaticism if you think you're discharging some divine command as opposed to just following common sense secular ideas about the good of helping people and the bad of harming them? Well, there's certainly uh, recurrently a kind of fanaticism associated with absolutism. Um, but I think two things about that. First of all, that, that is not the privilege or prerogative exclusively of the religious. Uh, and secondly, I think it's, come, it's a consequence of a kind of fallacious inference. Um, as I see it, I'd put it like this. The, the, here's one way of raising the question. Who is the better friend of tolerance, uh, the believer in absolute truth or the believer in relativism? Now, I'm inclined to say that the better friend of uh, tolerance and toleration is a believer in absolute truth. And for the following reason, but we can see how this might also go wrong, the believer in absolute truth thinks there is something to be discovered. And if that person has any experience of serious inquiry, they will know that human beings are fallible in the effort to discover it. But they will recognize in others what they find in themselves, a desire to discover it. And so the ground, what, what that belief in absolute truth does in the human search for it is grounds a respect for fellow inquirers and a recognition of the fallibility that we exhibit in our efforts to discover it. So there's a kind of toleration that comes from recognizing others as seekers after truth and the difficulty of discerning that truth. But what some absolutists about truth have done is transfer the attitude that's appropriate to the object of their inquiry, namely truth, and intolerance of error in that sense of falsity and such like, to fellow seekers and have become intolerant to fellow seekers. But not only is there nothing in the doctrine of absolute truth that requires that, there's something in it that seems to me to exclude it. On the other hand, the relativist is gently disposed towards difference and wants to perhaps respect and regard or, have, or be tolerant towards difference, but they may make the mistake of then transferring the attitude that's appropriate to the person, namely that of toleration, to the idea of truth itself. And so in losing the idea of a notion of absolute truth, they also lose the possibility of grounding a sense of value in that inquiry. So the claim I'd want to make is this, that uh, intolerance is not a consequence of a belief in truth, a truth to be discovered. Intolerance is as equally, uh, I mean, it can, it can arise from people who have that view, but that's a mistake. And it's equally and increasingly more commonly to be discovered on the part of people who have no regard for truth. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at www.veritas.org.